Generally, the testing begins with small piece of code or simple programs and features of an application in order to make sure that they work as expected. But once these simple components and a particular module is tested, it moves into the second phase of testing, which is all about integrating different modules and which has a lot more information to explore when we talk about integration testing. So let's talk a little more about integration today in this episode. Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about integration testing in more detail. First of all, let's understand the simple definition of integration testing. When we talk about the word integration, it means summation. We are trying to integrate two different objects with not only their uh, physical relationship, but also about their properties. So it's not about adding two numbers, it's about integrating something together. Now, when we generally talk about integration, it means that when two different modules can actually understand each other and actually perform operations one after the other. So when it comes to integration testing as a definition, we say that it is to test the flow of data or interfaces or interaction between two or more modules. Now, what are these interfaces, interactions or data flow? So when you talk about the word data flow, it simply means that when I do something on module one and uh, I move to module two, the module two understands and behaves accordingly when what based on what you have provided on module one. For example, if I have a web page which allows me to search and book a flight and the very first page allows you to search the flights based on your criteria. So you have a from city, to city and the date on which you want to fly, number of passengers or any specific conditions, what you want to provide like preferences and other things. And then you hit on search button. The moment you do that, the next module, which basically shows you the list of all available flights in the database is based on your criteria. Now, how this module two understands what you have done on module one? That's because of integration. It carries information from a particular module to the second module. Now that's data flow or even when you talk about the interface which is being built here between them. Now further, if you have to elaborate more on the word interface, interface is basically like, for example, I have a software which is like an e-commerce website and I have a third party software for making payments like payment gateway. So now these payment gateways will have an interaction with your APIs in order to understand when I come into picture. And at that time also, it will carry the amount which you have to make the payment for after you're done shopping. So that interaction is what we test, uh, which is built earlier during the development and implementations. To validate that, we conduct integration testing. Now integration testing is mainly to look for flow of data, which can be between even, you know, you're talking between two cell phones, you send a text from one phone to another phone, that's also data flow. Money transfer from one account to another account is another data flow example. But to understand that, we have interfaces which are being built to understand different modules or different applications. Additionally, if we have to talk more about integration testing, it is of two types. First, incremental integration testing. Second, non-incremental integration testing. Now, incremental testing is all about when the modules are in a proper sequence. That means one, two, three, four, five. And I have no provisions to move from one to three directly. I have to go through two to reach to three. And similarly, you might find a lot of such applications which invites a systematic orientation of different modules in order to complete a transaction. Look at the example of ATM. You have to follow a systematic process in order to withdraw money or get a mini statement or check on the balance in query. So you have to swipe a card, enter your PIN, select the menu option or enter the amount which you want to withdraw, enter your you know, type of uh, uh, transaction you want like the printed slip or on the screen and then exit. Same way, if you want to book a flight, you follow the same kind of instructions. You launch the application, log in into that, search for a flight, 
select a flight, enter your passenger details and make the payment with the itinerary. So if you find such applications which has a systematic flow and does not allow you to move from one module to the next or further modules directly, then you call it as incremental integration testing and have two different approaches to apply for testing that is top down approach and bottom up approach. The top down approach allows you to move from forward to back or like to the end, top to end. For example, one, two, three, four, five. And the next approach is bottom up approach, which allows you to come from last to first. That is like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The second type of integration testing is called as non-incremental integration testing, where the modules are randomly arranged. For example, if you talk about Facebook, you talk about LinkedIn, you talk about any such application which allows you to jump from any particular module to any particular module. They have no secrets. If I'm in home or my uh, timeline, I can directly have a link clicked to, to taking me to the notifications. If I'm in notifications, I can directly jump to my groups. So if you see, all the options are clearly highlighted to you on the page itself. In fact, we talk about Gmail. You see a lot of links on your left side panel that I can go from inbox to send item, send item to draft, draft to trash, trash to bin, bin to spam, anywhere to anywhere. So that means all the modules are connected to each other. And thus we call it as, it's a non-incremental integration. And we have another approach to be used for that. And that approach is called as Big Bang approach. So Big Bang approach is another important thing to be understood when applying integration or non-incremental integration testing. So yes, integration generally, uh, the test cases for integration testing are derived from use cases because use cases is another important thing which will help you to determine what kind of control flow does a system has and how the modules are connected to each other. So that will be very helpful to derive test cases. Even if you talk about straight transition diagrams could be another basis to derive your integration test. And quite often it is recommended that you conduct it at the uh, with using white box testing approach in order to find defects at a control flow level or data flow level so there are a lot of details beyond this but we are keeping it simple and light if you have anything else you are always free to let us know so that i can get you more details and respond to your queries and make you understand so that's all from this particular episode team. I hope you really had really interesting and good takeaways from this session. We will be getting back to you with another interesting episode of Testing in Russia. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.